Mr. Speaker, in last year's budget debate, I attempted to paint a picture as to how the ministry and government extension is going to achieve our 700 million by 2030. I think I did well, and most persons got the flu. But today, I'm going to give a progress report where we are and what we plan to do in meeting our targets. But before I even do that, Mr. Speaker, I want to place the entire sector into context. I would like to remind the Honorable House of Hurricane Marion 2017 and the devastation it did to the agricultural sector. We were at ground zero. And I think it is worth repeating, Mr. Speaker, because many times you listen to this course on the sector people fail to realize that in 2017 we had ground zero and we had food security issues. Just to remind them the damage that was caused by Queen Maria, we lost 80 to 100 percent of our root crops, vegetables, bananas and plantain, and 90 percent of sugar. crops. The total damage and losses was estimated at $576.8 million. That was just after recovering from Capital of America, Mr. Speaker. So I'm saying all that to say, Mr. Speaker, when we are discussing the performance of the sector, it must be in a post maria context, Mr. Speaker. Let's don't forget that. But while I'm on my feet, Mr. Speaker, let me just send best wishes to my colleagues in Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Jamaica, and Barbados, who are now spearheading the recovery of the sectors. And just for information, they suffered quite a bit of damage as well. In St. Vincent, they suffered losses of 25.9 million US dollars that the agricultural sector on the road. In Jamaica, they suffered losses of 29.9 million dollars. St. Lucia, 2.6 million. Barbados, mainly to the fishery sector, $850,000, that's US. In Grenada, $100 million, which is total into $159.3 million US. When we convert to EC, $25.4 million EC. But remember, Dominica alone was $576 million. So my good friend from Marigua, the member from Marigua, said that it's not climate change that set back the economy and its growth and development. I wonder in what planet is living, Mr. Speaker. Because it is clear that the, the food security issues we are facing is not because of bad agricultural policies, but indeed is because of the impacts of climate change, Mr. Speaker. So, I want to join my voice, I want to add with the voice of the Prime Minister and the President to call for climate justice for small island developing states like us, Mr. Speaker. So the developing countries that are the greater contributors to greenhouse gases should now think of developing facilities targeted specifically to the agri sector so that we can make sure that we have food secured, Mr. Speaker. The conversation started last year in Dubai at COP28, where we had the Emirates Declaration. I'm looking forward to COP29, where we'll continue to discuss. But what we're saying is that we are calling for a special facility targeting agriculture, not, just because for, not only because of we are losing and our damages, but we have that facility must be targeting also how we adapting to the impact of climate change. It's difficult, um, Mr. Speaker, for farmers now to grow open field vegetables without irrigation or protective agriculture. Who's going to put that bill? Not because of us causing it. They are the ones who are emitting the greenhouse gases. And we are now experiencing longer droughts, wetter seasons that is causing the proliferation of pests and diseases. And, we are, and, and now we have to find ourselves now looking for resources now to provide to our farmers to adapt to that. It is not fair. So I'm just adding my vote to climate justice. 
and will continue that discuss at COP29, Minister for Environment. You agree on that? Wonderful. But Mr. Speaker, in Dominica, we are very resilient people. We have a resilient crop. And we are resilient farmers. So we're able to bounce back quickly from Hurricane Maria. Many countries don't have a level of resilience like us. So I'm just going to give you some figures because when people are saying that the sector is not growing, nothing is happening in agriculture, the figure says differently. So put me in, Mr. Speaker. In 2022, at the end of 2022, the contribution to GDP was 16.5. But it came up from 2018, where it was 10.6. In 2019, it was 11.6. In 2020, 14.7. And in 2021, it was 16.5. So we've seen the trend, but we've seen the growth and contribution of oil culture to GDP. So I can't really comprehend when I understand people keep saying that there's no growth in the sector, nothing is happening, the sector is dead, but the figure says otherwise. Since Hurricane Mary, Mr. Speaker, we are once again self-sufficient in X. I mean, last Christmas, maybe for the past 10 years we've been importing, we had not to import not one tree of X last Christmas because our farmers are producing. And they are not doing it on their own. It's because of support from the Ministry of Agriculture and the government, Mr. Speaker. We have also regained market share in the north, on the island north of Dominica. The Minister of Trade can speak to that. In St. Martin, in St. Kitts, in Totola, in Anguilla. We are back on the market. And they're asking for food. You know, so, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, that did not really happen overnight or just like that. It's because of serious investment we've been making in the sector. And just to be clear on that, because many times we say we, we, we invest, people want, want us to do to, to figures. But I'm, I'm a figures person, so I have plenty of figures for you today. When we look at the recurrent and capital expenditure from 2018, we invested $33.8 million in the sector. From 2018 to the 19 fiscal year, it was $12.9 million. From 2019 to 2020 fiscal year, it was $17.4 million. 2020, 2021 fiscal year, it was $24.4 million. 2021 to 2022, it was $35.2 million. 2022 to 2023, it was $24.1 million. And last fiscal year, it was $21.8 million. A total of $169.8 million for the past five years, Mr. Speaker. Post Hurricane Maria. That's investment in the agricultural sector. So I can't understand your saying the government is not putting money in agriculture. I, really, I don't know what I'm living, but my figure says differently. And if you want to unpack these numbers, you can make a reference to page 49 of the Economic and Social Review. You'll see it is unpacked for 2019 and 2020. So you'll see the different heads where the money was spent. Okay? So that's the context, Mr. Speaker. So I'm going to provide some updates as where we are in meeting our 700 by 2030 goal, Mr. Speaker. Post Hurricane Maria, we supported 4,000. 563 farmers with input packages consisting of fertilizer, agrochemicals, tools, equipment, and planting material valued at $18 million. That just we just give that to farmers to just go back in the land and plant. And we saw a resurgence of agriculture on over 4,000 acres of land, Mr. Speaker. The data is there to show. Okay? Mr. Speaker, since Hurricane Maria, we really did not implement a structured tree crop replanting program. So we've put in system in place to do that. So as we, currently, as I'm speaking to you, we have 100,000 seedlings roots of citrus at the post of agri station getting ready for distribution next, Mr. Speaker. 
100,000. That's a record. The most the ministry would have ever done before was 5,000. 100,000 citrus root stuff. Currently being ready, getting prepared for distribution next, Mr. Speaker. That's citrus only. And as the largest propagation ever in CARICOM, the closest was 25,000 in Jamaica. I have records to show that. But how are we not doing anything now? And while I'm on that, Mr. Speaker, I really want to, to, to commend my, my friend and colleague, Jerry Cabell, at the one mile agri station. When many people thought my, my, my targets were ambitious, he stood by me and he got the job done. So that's the kind of spirit you want in the ministry. Okay, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to comment now. For Coco, my good friend, um, um, no, my good friend there. Uh, yeah, Paris. I know they do a lot of cocoa. Senator, Senator. Say Senator Paris, yes. We have supported the rehabilitation and establishment of 317 acres of cocoa among 226 farmers, Mr. Speaker. That's what it did from 2020 to 2024. 317 acres. We understand that the demand for cocoa is very high. Dex is importing from Grenada, basically to supply the persons who are doing cocoa sticks and other byproducts of cocoa. So we are going to really bounce back with cocoa production so that we can be self-sufficient. So in three, four years, Mr. Speaker, we'll have no need to be importing cocoa beans from anywhere. We'll be self-sufficient in cocoa production. And that, Mr. Speaker, we're taking serious because the demand for cocoa beans is very, very high. On the trick of like, like avocado, we are currently propagating about 18,000 trees of avocado. Normally, we would do 5,000, but we have, we have some targets at the ministry. They said we are doing a, a structured replanting program, so we have to make planting materials available to the farmers. And for mangoes, we are doing about 12,000 as we speak. But the one I've dealt to my heart, Mr. Speaker, is easy banana and plantain. Yes. But the demand for these two commodities are very high. We've imported 15,000 tissue culture planting plants. And we have distributed everything, Mr. Speaker, to farmers across the island, 15,000. As I'm speaking to you, we have 17,000 tissue culture banana planting material at the agri station currently being hardened for distribution in next week. And by October this year, we'll be distributing an additional 30,000 tissue culture, banana planting material to farmers, totaling to 45,000 banana tissue culture planting material, Mr. Speaker. So we are revamping the banana and planting subsector because the demand is huge and we're taking it very seriously. Just for the planting material only, we spent about 76,000 EC to procure the planting material. But I'll give you some good news later because we have no need to import tissue culture planting material going forward. But we'll speak to that later, Mr. Speaker. In addition to that, we did not just provide the planting material, but we've recently signed a contract of $1.1 million to provide the farmers with fertilizer, chemicals, and tools to ensure that the planting matters we give them are taken care of, Mr. Speaker. So you're not doing things like that. It's a plant program. Look your planting material, we give you fertilizers, chemical tools, and training to go with it to get it right, Mr. Speaker. That's how we do things. Organize. We're not like that. Mr. Speaker, for white potatoes, this year we imported over 2,000 bags. We had a fair season. Um, I must confess, we received the planting material a, a, a bit late. So we got a dry spell with academic production. So we're on average this year. But um, last year, sorry, last season. But this coming, upcoming season, we are looking to import it much earlier so we can catch the October, November planting season. Um, so we can have a higher yield and make season. But that's a very important crop which we are present focus on because it's one of our import substitution crops under that program that we are doing. 
So that we, we, we're going to put emphasis on. In addition, Mr. Speaker, we distributed over 400,000 seedlings, vegetable seedlings to farmers around the island. And that's from the Chinese mission at the Portsmouth Agricultural Station. That was in an effort to promote the backyard garden and, of course, to promote the fight against NCDs, Mr. Speaker. So that's a planned program we do, collaborating with the Ministry of Health to make sure that every, every home, household can have a tomato, a lettuce, or cabbage plant in the backyard. And we provided that planting material free of charge. But the most exciting part, Mr. Speaker, is livestock. Never in the history of agriculture we've seen so much investment in livestock, in livestock production and focus on livestock production. So again, we provide over 170 farmers with building material and monies for labor to construct resilient pens for chicken and pigs across the island. That cost the government $7.5 million, Mr. Speaker. Just so. Tell me where the carbon would go. And the government giving you money to build the pen. They're giving you the material. And if lobby good, you even get in the big chicken and the and the pork to put inside. If if lobby good, where else you can find that? And you want to tell me we're saying that nothing is being done in the agricultural sector? I mean that's unbelievable. 7.5 million dollars worth of material and money to do that. We also focus on, 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 on apiculture. We supported 15 apiaries with um, 133 um, structures for, for, for bees, for beekeeping. And we constructed over 12 pig structures that can accommodate 1,000 pigs. We did the same for, for poultry, where we did over 20 pens that can accommodate over 17,000 birds. We did for rabbits, we did for goat and sheep. And we also provided farmers that, is doing, that are doing small ruminants with electric fencing wire. Where you ever heard here in Dominica? Electric fencing wire. So one of the paddock, put their battery on the wire, and anything come uh, shocking that and the dogs was running. So the issue we had with dogs eating good, we are under control. Yes, so we've introduced that. You know, bringing technology into the whole agricultural sector, okay? And Paul by Solar to eh? Yeah. Miss um, Honorable Henderson would, 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 would like to hear that. Yeah. Okay. But sometime in general, um, Mr. Speaker, you would have heard um, farmers complain about a shortage of feed, animal feed. They had me on a cartoon with a red suit running and all kinds of animals running behind me because they thought it, it was a government issue. But, it, but that was a private sector issue because government don't import feed. Um, they had some sea swells, and the boat could not dock, so the containers could not land, so they were um, redirected to other ports. So it took some time, and the chef life for, for animal feed, you know, it's about 30 days maximum, so it can't be too long. So the importers bring every week. So we had a little break in that. And, um, but government saw it as our business, though, although it's our responsibility. But we invested over $135,000, emergency funding to bring in feed from Guadeloupe to supply to the farmers who were struggling with a lack of feed. I mean, I mean, that's a caring government. Who else, I mean, who else would do that? We stepped in, in matter of three days. A bag land and high quality feeder, even better than what is imported I'm, 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 I'm from the suppliers. I hear when them chickens start to leave my brother, it was threefold when come for production. And the farmers keep asking for, asking for that brand, but, but yeah, but we promise that we'll hook you back to see what we can do to bring a ship in again. High quality feed. You know, so we stepped in to cushion that problem, and we were happy to do so. Um, we also worked, Mr. F um, um, speaker, with some small ruminants farmers, around 34 of them, who brought in semen to do artificial um, insemination. That was a wonderful idea. Our technicians worked with them. We stored the, the, the scrolls at the livestock um, station in, in London Dairy. And we actually went out to do the AI um, on small ruminants and we were able to impregnate about 18 small ruminants. And, 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 and they're doing good. Artificial insemination. That's when you take the semen, you put in a syringe, the technician goes through the 
part I don't want to I'm talking there and you sign in and then you have the but 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 what's important though with that technology you can determine what trait you want so if you want a pig that have nice muscle straight back high heeled in you can bring in the cement tailored for that you know so that's the importance of that hybrid and you can get just like this is resistance you know and all that so it's a very important stuff that you don't have to depend on your local races to cross but you can bring in hybrids and cross and get the desert trip so that's the way we're going okay and and we are not stopping there what we did seeing that our lab is not functional we have our hydrogen gas everything working well we have we have already procured additional straws so soon mr speaker we'll be importing um one of the straws of, of the boa semen that's a type of of goat i would say one of the straws of the nubian we also go to give support to the pig farmers um we have 75 straws of the large white um the same for langries and the same for dura so we're getting real pure breed um freedom straws and the semen so we can basically determine what type of bridge we want so we can basically decide if we want pork for meat for fat then we can bring in bridge for that if we want good for milk we can bring in we can bring semen to get us that you know so there's high science operation happening there no longer we have to wait for the natural vibes we can do it by insemination and um, we also did some work on our infrastructure um throughout the last fiscal year we were able to construct 300 facilities at one mile in support of our lab which um, we shall speak to um and the most exciting part for me mr speaker um is that we commissioned our tissue culture lab 11.4 million dollars funded by the people's republic of china so we, so we are bringing science into that thing and and that lab will will produce over 500,000 seedlings per year 100,000 in every cycle five cycles a year and the good part we ensured that we have a seed storage facility where we can create a seed bank to make sure if we can struck we have all our purebred seeds stored in a safe place and it's big enough to accommodate the ucs no they, they were struck by burial i met to the ministers and they don't want to make our seed bank an ocs hub to store seeds in times of so we can get proper use of seeds when if we are struck by a disaster speaker so that's the kind of thinking we have and things we are doing so it's not just plant a tree and say you don't know, like you have to be in science in it and now we are bringing the resilience component in it so if you're struck we no longer have to import seeds we'll have it secured right here in in dominic mr speaker um we have already hired the the, the, the manager um for for the lab and soon we'll be interviewing for the other positions which is the groom person technician the laboratory technician the assistant lab technician and a field technician as a speaker um so once our structures are in place we'll see full operation but as we speak we are having operations going and we have started working on producing tissue culture plantings as i'm speaking to you mr speaker so we are you can say that we are operationalized we are in high speed okay but let's expand the speaker in that lab you can produce what you want so if you want a plant that is tolerant to a particular disease you can bring any desert tree and tell it to that you want a plant that is high yielding you can do that and you can have one of these conditions that are being produced you'll get disease free planting material so we're starting fresh so we are not going to promote that disorder in every plant of plantings and bananas anymore because once you have black sicker toker and yellow and and, 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 and yellow sicker toker it, it it passes through the um um, um, um through the um, baby plant so we need to be providing farmers with clean planting planting material every time going forward so we'll have a clean clean and slit of plants in the open field and of course we can enhance for production and productivity um on farm to speaker we did some work at the central livestock farm that's where we keep our animal game plasms and our breeds and everything so we had to do some restructuring there so we build a new bull uh, um, bullpen and sheep and good facility so we can continue breeding to provide high quality breeding stocks 
um, to farmers. Um, we did some work in Salisbury, though, Mr. Speaker. Salisbury. One of my favorite places on, um, on the West Coast. We are about 90% completed with the irrigation system. We will provide reliable water to 62 farmers on the Grand Savan, Mr. Speaker. Before what we had was load shedding of water. When the east on, the west off. When the north on, the south off. And farmers' crops will suffer. It. What we intervene? We provide the monies. And now Mr. Burden Nation, who's the contractor, I met him yesterday, he's now doing the final leg of it. So in a matter of two weeks, that, that, that system will be commissioned. And we did not stop there, you know, Mr. Speaker. In addition to that, on the WUSC, my, which is headed by, by my good friend, Dr. Nadia Packet, who is my PS wife, by the way, they supported about 20 farmers with irrigation supplies, costing $63,000. And I'm still in Salisbury, eh? $63,000, you know, so that we, we and, and, that, and, and that's smart initiatives that they, they, they implemented to provide farmers with the tanks, the drip lines, and the other amenities. But importantly, Dr. Henderson, yes. we also provided solar irrigation timers as well. Right. Yes, so they can stay at their home, they can put on the irrigation, they can go post off market, and the sun point out, it can go for 12 o'clock, it can come back on 6 o'clock, just like that. Just so. So that is the kind of technology we introduced in, in farming now. Right there on the Grand Summer. So, you know, so that is like a nice hawk we put in there for them and farmers will come and learn. And that technology will disseminate around the island. Um, so other farmers can, can, can learn from that. Feeder Roads, Mr. Speaker. Um, I know the member for South is working about Feeder Roads. We have, we have promised to do the one. Is, is Gwara Rivia, Gwara Avin, you call it? Right. We, we, I, I promised them to, to do that one for last, last fiscal year. Yes. You know, but we had to, they were competing priorities. We had the sudden collapse of the highway in Salisbury again. You know, so we had to choose for um, um, the, uh, um, the parallel. Either we do the highway or we do the little bridge for the federal road. And as the Minister of Farm of Hook said last night, the highway cost over $4 million. But I still didn't leave the feeder road abandoned. I sent much in there over three times during the fiscal year to maintain a rainfall to unblock and to dredge. But I'm promising this fiscal year we'll, we'll do some work there. But in addition to that, we did work around the island. I, I see not only living, Mopo Makato, get a, a lot of attention. Kalibishi, Woodfordil, Cuba, Kahum, Pebush. We, we did some work last fiscal year. And as we promised, every year we'll add on some names. I'm in the budget, we will pay attention to and we'll take them by phases and by numbers until eventually we get everything done. Because cement, sand, stone, fiber mesh, and BRC expensive. Engineer Paris can tell that. You know, and we try our best to see how we can we can provide that to the farmers. School agriculture, Mr. Speaker, we launch a school agriculture competition. Honorable Joseph will speak more to that. But just to say, we supported 13 primary schools and we provided over 19,000 seedlings to the school, Mr. Speaker. But I'll leave that for Mr. Joseph, which is right down the alley. I'm sure we'll speak to that a bit later. Youth and agriculture. That's my baby, too. But I, I'll just stay a bit on it because Mr. Joseph will speak to more later. We are going to have next week, from the 7th to the 9th of August, that's from next Wednesday, the first OECS Youth in Agriculture Symposium in Dominican Republic, where over 30 persons, young persons, farmers, entrepreneurs, will descend in Dominica, or on Dominica rather, where they will have um, talks, um, we'll have workshops, we'll have an expo right here in the Commonwealth, Mr. Speaker. And that was initiated by Dominica. That's why we are hosting the first ever OECS Youth in agriculture workshops. Over 30 youth from Dominica will participate, so we have around 18 youth from the region, plus technicians and officials, and we have over 30 young persons registered already from Dominica to be part of that, where we're seeking to, you know, share information and get them to love a skill 
and a sector that is important for our food security, Mr. Speaker. Agriculture mechanization, we did some work there. We procured some um, rotavators and power tillers before the political planting season last year. It is not adequate. We still saw hurt because of lack of, of machinery, I must confess. Um, but we have good news, Mr. Speaker. We have over 20 pieces of machines coming down um, from China. And the intention is to position them in every agricultural region so farmers can have full access to rotavators, tillers, and tractors. So God willing, this planting season, we will not experience that shortage of, of machines. So that's our plan. Over 25 pieces of tractors, rotavators, power tillers will be on island soon. And we are going to make them fully available to farmers so that they can prepare the land for planting season, not for white potatoes, but for vegetables and other crops that they grow, pineapples, etc. Um, extension mobility. I like to term it that way. I don't say transport for extension. It's extension mobility. That, that's what we call it at the ministry. We were able to purchase free brand new vehicles. The public farmer God is upset about it, but I forgive him for being vexed that I gave the excellent of the Marigold transport to go on his own farm at Craig. I, I really can understand that. Okay? Um, we got two pickups and a chimney. We would have preferred if we had four chimneys instead. Review so far, the officer said they have preferred the nickname means because it can go further inland than smaller roads and the terrain we have. But anyhow, we satisfied what we, what we got. Over $400,000 was spent to provide vehicles for extension officers to meet the farmers because we had complaints. Two complaints I got eh? when I um, was moved to the ministry. The guys told me they don't have transport and they don't have county. That's two complaints when I landed. For the past time I'm there, Mr. Speaker, we've appointed 25 extension officers. 25. A different level. From AO3 to AO2 to AO1s. And now recently, we're able to provide them with the vehicles so that they can be comfortable and complain less and get to the family because that's what they've been paid for, to go out and meet the families. So we're trying our best at the government to really respond to the needs so the farmers can be better served, Mr. Speaker. So, so that, that's our mission. But another nice one, Mr. Speaker, is the procurement facility we established at the ministry, which is being, um, not a ministry, but at Dexia, where we provided Dexia with 5 million EC yeah, to just buy food. Dexia buying so much food now, they're even buying oil. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> that's how the thing working, you know? And what we saw is that the farmers are encouraged now and farmers are planting and they're producing and it's evident because of the plantings we have on island now and that farmers are so happy they're making money they come to dexia they deliver them fellas grade that in three days they get next year bam in two days in two days they're being paid before it had a long wait and they were frustrated and they got a little, you know, it's grown to then fellas pull back. Yeah. But now fellas beating with by, 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 by that, you know. Because things are good, money flowing, farmers are happy, yeah. Mr. Speaker, because of this um, Pokemon facility. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, Mr. Speaker, for, for, for this fiscal year, we will, we will allocated about $6.1 million. We have $5.2 for capital and $9 million for recurring. But we have plans for that money. So if you permit me, Mr. Speaker, let me outline some of our plans for, for this fiscal year. We are going to continue to, to push banana and plantains. Because as I said, that we are going to revamp um, the, the banana and plantain subsector. Um, we have targets. Um, to 25 more minutes, 2-5. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's fine. We have targets, Mr. Speaker, to, to, to meet and we are going to at least produce um, about three acres of banana and plantains this coming season. In addition to that, we'll strengthen our black sickle management. We have some issues there. Well, do we, 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 the farmers are willing and they're doing the stuff, but the black sickle tucker is really taking a hold. So we're going to really look at that, the whole management where we provide the farmers with the equipment and the oil and the fungicides, empower them to do their own management, Mr. Speaker. 
for root crops, we are going to target the establishment of over 500 acres of root crops. Um, this season, we're looking at yams, dashing, sweet potato, tiny ginger, and our five seeds program, Mr. Speaker. Citrus, coconut, coffee, cocoa. But there was a silent sea, Mr. Speaker. The last sea was silent. So I could not say no way I, I, I went in no meeting. All I said in five seas, but I was giving them four seas. So now the last sea now, Dr. McIntyre clearly articulated the, the last sea in Mrs. Burger. If you permit me, I'll quote. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the government of Dominica is committed to the development of a comprehensive legislation that allows for safe access to cannabis products for medical and therapeutic use while creating economic contributions, opportunities for growers and processors of the cannabis plant. So now I can say the five C, the last C, cannabis. I mean, that is so progressive, Mr. Speaker, because the cannabis industry, the medicinal cannabis industry, no, the, 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 last time I checked, it was $12.6 billion. And it's projected by, 20, by 2032, it will be 40.8 billion US dollars. So we need some of that. We need, we, we need to be part of that, Mr. Speaker. Okay? And as a ministry, we're seeing that it will contribute to our target of the 700 million by 2030. So is uh, that, that fifth C, I could not say no. I can say, yeah, we'll pass by that time. But that, you know, I'm, going, I'm so happy for that. And um, we'll work with the, his chambers and the authority that PM spoke about that will be established to ensure that that 5C is properly taken care of, Mr. Speaker. Um, for irrigation, we have and will support over 100 farmers with irrigation micro systems for the farm, powered by solar as well, and some ramp pumps. That will cost us over $1 million, Mr. Speaker. Just to do that, we're also going to invest in protective agriculture, support about 73 farmers, that'll cost us about $2.1 million as well. And we must do that because, as I mentioned earlier, the impact of climate change. No longer farmers can plant open field. So we are not just doing things for show. We're doing things because we need to do it. So farmers need greenhouses, they need hydroponic systems, right. and they need irrigation because of the brutal drought periods that we are getting and the heavy rains that sometimes we shelter the critical crops. So we must and we are going to invest $2.1 million in that in this fiscal year to support our farmers. We'll construct a citrus certification facility at London Dairy on our ground, um, which will be able to produce 50,000 seedlings. You know the issues we have with Christasia and, um, and citrus breeding disease. So we need to have that facility to ensure that when we produce seedling, um, citrus seedling material, that they're under the proper and best condition. And also, we'll expand the, the, um, the station at Woodford Hill so we can do more cocoa and other colors and avocados of farmers. But an exciting part I know the, mem the member for Rosa would like is we are going to do an agro pack. Not in Rosa, but in, but in Pospa. <laughs> but we are going to do... I, I know, no, I, I know shit of technology, hydroponics. Where, yeah, that's it, finally. Where, where we'll have hydroponic systems and aquaculture ponds on one site. Where we'll have the technology, everything being automated, and have young persons come in to train. But of course, we'll do it in a public private partnership model where we can also provide and produce this stuff commercially because there are some targets and markets that we have to meet, particularly for vegetables. So that's what we're going to do in Picard. We have already provided specs, and we're going to send out for the hydroponics. And under the phase nine of the Chinese Technical Mission, we'll be getting our culture set up for that. They have, they have they already visited, done the service, did the thing, and God willing, everything equal, we'll see that agro park in Postmouth in this fiscal year. For livestock, Mr. Speaker, we'll continue to invest in livestock because we want to achieve protein security by 2030. And we have some targets 
So we are looking to target to reduce the importation of meat by 30% by 2028 and by 65% by 2030. And because we are going to place emphasis particularly on chicken and pork. So even within the subsectors, we are going to have targets as well. So we are going to target 20 commercial broiler producers, each of them running about 5,000 birds, and that will give us a yield of over 1,000 birds slaughtered every week. So we're going to work towards that. We are going to do a similar thing for, for pigs. We're going to target around 50 commercial pig farmers, with minimum six sows each, and that will yield over 945,000 pounds of meat per year, so that we can aggressively reduce on importation of, of meat. Again, helping us to meet our targets by 2030. And investing in the poultry and the pork is not alone. We've, we have signed a contract for $6.4 million abattoir. So when we produce, we can process. Okay? As I'm speaking to you, work is ongoing. They are doing demolition works. And we'll see actual construction to commence pretty soon. And the abattoir will be able to process 4,000 birds per day. Per day. 4,000 birds per day. And about 50 pigs per day. Okay? So that will include the perimeter fencing. We'll do a new water system. A new production line for the for the chicken, and I'm um, incinerator, backup generator, and the entire works, I'm um, Mr. Speaker. And the two that are again, Mr. Speaker, you see, we're looking at the whole value chain, eh? the whole production system. We are going to invest in an animal feed plant, Mr. Speaker. We are mindful that about the, 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 the price or the cost for animal feed has increased about 59.9% over the past three years. So on average, a bag of animal feed is about $60, $60. And the cost of producing animals, 70% of that cost is just buying feed. So we had to intervene long term. We had money, Mr. Speaker, to buy some feed for short term. We said, no, let's use that money instead and build a plant where we can produce feed and reduce the cost of feed by around 30 to 50%. That's what we are doing, Mr. Speaker. And that, as I speak, is in process. The Pokemon has started, and we are going to call for tenders for that plant very soon. It's in two parts. We do the machinery separately, and then we do the construction of the actual structure to hold the machinery very soon. And that must be completed by me next year because it's on the particular project. So we are well on our way, Mr. Speaker. And that too, we will promote that to have it been managed on the public private partnership so that it can be managed and sustained um, credibly. The speaker, the member for Marigold spoke about hatchery um, in his presentation. I must comment him on that because once you have persons invest in that mean the conditions are conducive for investment. So I mean government are doing the right thing, putting the right systems in place, providing the right incentives for persons to invest. But in addition to that, we are going to support the hatchery operators with about hundred thousand US dollars. This fiscal year to upgrade the facility, because there's a need to provide the kicks locally, because as we speak, we're importing from Barbados, and sometimes you miss a flight, you miss something, and it's a sofa. So we're promoting the hatchery development on island as we speak, so we are going to provide them 100,000 US dollars to support them in buying modern equipment to do that. Mr. Speaker, so, epiculture, Mr. Speaker, the reign of bees, that we see is a little subsect that needs some attention, and we're going to provide some resources this fiscal year, where 15 farmers will be supported, and we'll assist them with about 100 hives, so we can expand production. We've met with them a few months back, and we have promised that, and look now, we are in plans now to deliver, Mr. Speaker, and we are able to do that. I'm very happy for that. Having said all that, Mr. Speaker, we understand that we need a proper machinery to really monitor and deliver that. So we are going to reform how we do our extension services. We are going to take a commodity approach where every team leader, a senior officer, will be given a commodity to focus on. So if the permanent secretary wants information on coke and coffee, he knows who to call. Right. And that person will be responsible for establishment, planting material requirements, the technical packaging, 
the forecasting of hills, it will be a one-stop shop. So that one person, senior officer, will liaise with all the other regions and collate and provide. And of course, fundamentally, they'll be responsible for expanding that subsector. So that's the approach. So just quickly, some of the subsectors that we have, Yams, Dashin, and Tanya, we'll have one person responsible for that. Then we have cassava, ginger, and turmeric, pineapples and passion fruit, white potatoes and sweet potatoes. We have vegetables and greenhouse production and hydroponics, coffee and cocoa, citrus coconut. We have avocado and other tree crops, floriculture by itself, apiculture by itself, poultry by itself, pig production by itself, and small ruminants, Mr. Speaker. For free the roads, Mr. Speaker, if you look at page 22 on the budget address, we'll see that we are going to do some, some works on Federal Road this fiscal year. We have the Pitted Makutri in Salisbury. We have the Captain Bruce in Marigot. Yes? You, you, want me to, to, to repeat it? We have Pitted Makutri in Salisbury. We have Captain Bruce in Marigot. We have Niba Atli in Layu, Station Road in La Plaine, Dalfour C. In, 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 um, in Granby, and we are going to focus on this, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that the high yielding areas are taken care of and farmers can go to their plants, to their farms, freely, Mr. Speaker. And these roads that were not recommended by us, eh, is the frontline officers who travel these roads every day, who recommend the list, and we went with it. So it's not like, well, you're going to say we, we, we pick it and choose it. Okay? So, Captain Bruce, coming soon, my brother. Yeah, don't be afraid. But with all I'm, Mr. Speaker, we have to market what we grow. Because all this lovely thing I said there, we have to sell the produce. So, we've been working very closely with Dex here in doing so. I've spoken about the, the Pokemon facility already. In addition to that, we'll be supporting the Hawksters with over $540,000 to buy packaging material. Because we know the cost of boxes are very expensive. So in order for us to make them more competitive, we are going to support them so they can you know, be more competitive on export the produce on the market. We'll be also um, providing next year with over $400,000 to buy equipment and to establish the marketing depots um, in, in different islands in the region like Barbados and Antigua and Totola so that they can ship and distribute. So these are the systems we're putting in place for us to... Um, sell what we grow. And the demands are there. Just in Antigua, we have demands of over 2,000 boxes of plantains alone. In Barbados, we have a weekly request of 2,000 boxes of bananas alone. So it's not just planting. We are taking a market-led approach. Reason why we're investing in particular communities, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I just want to thank my, my, my colleagues at the ministry, Honorable Defoe, Honorable Joseph, and our partners, of course, the Chinese Technical Mission, um, our Cuban friends, very helpful, ICA, FAO, WUSP, CADI, Dexia, and the World Bank for the support um, over the years. And of course, my PS Anselm was hit the road running. Eh? He came in, he tied his waist, and he hit that road running, my brother. So I have great support from Anselm. And I, want to, I really want to thank him for that. And, yeah, and we're working well together. Thank you for it. Our staff at the PIU, at the Woodbank Project, Mr. Speaker, and all the staff at the Ministry, the Director, Mr. Stevenson, and all the frontline officers, and most importantly, our farmers who are re remain resilient and stick to the farm and ensuring that we can maintain food security in Dominica, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, but I must link all what I said to the airport as well. Because we need to get the stuff out and sometimes in the same day as well. So taking all that I said to the next level, the airport will facilitate moving the produce, and it can open us, us open the country to new markets in Europe, in the US, where we can sell weekly and daily as well. So I'm thankful for that, Mr. Speaker. Last year I made, I, I, I made an analogy with Publix. I know Dr. Ennis is waiting for that one, please. But I'll use flowers instead. Imagine you in Newfoundland, and you have a stain 200 boxes of, of, of amphiriums. I need to get to a hotel in Miami by the evening. You can go to Newfoundland, 4 o'clock, cut the amphiriums, clean it, treat it, 
drive to Wesley, put it on AmeriJet, and by 4 p.m., eat in Florida. Bam! Just like that. Amazon Prime. And your money is in your account. One time. That is what we are doing, speaker. And I said, in St. Vincent, when they open the, the, in the, the, the new airport, the export of agricultural produce increased fivefold. We have the models there, we have the examples here. So the farmers need to take ownership of the airport as well. It's not just for night, bed nights and for tourists, it's for the sector as well. And we know that. The reason why we are putting the system in place at the ministry to make sure our production levels are up, our farmers are mobilized, the technology is there, so we can respond to the market when the airport is ready for them to speak. In. That's what we are doing. I'm not speaking about the hotels. On page 18 of the, of the budget, we have about five new hotels. More tourists, more food will sell. More carrot, more cabbage, more lettuce, more tomato will sell. So that's how we connect with tourism. The cruise spot, you have more tourists descending in Dominica. When you want my boy, my boy wants fig, she wants lettuce, she wants tanya. It will sell. So farmers will take care of that. The cable car will have the same impact. But of course, my baby, the marina, right in my constituency. The marina. Okay. Right in the quarter constituency. $203 million investment in the marina. Being able to birth 100 yachts at a time. Providing 300 jobs in construction and 150 permanent jobs upon completion. It cannot get better than that, Mr. Speaker. Right then, Cotting. I love this. Okay? So <laughs> I'll be working closely with, with, with Minister of Tourism, of course, during construction, so that we need to get ready. Our young persons need to get trained for the marina because there are some specialized areas that they need to be um, um, trained in. Um, the member for Post Pop mentioned a few when she presented. And we're going closely to ensure that they are to be told and told to take advantage of the marina. Mr. Speaker, as I'm winding down, things, I'm, I'm, I'll stay away from that one. <laughs> While I'm winding on the speaker, I cannot live without touching the cottage constituency. My home place, bread, I was born there, brought up there. I love lovely people, and I'm going to try my best to see how I can assist them. So we made a few, um, we, we, we had a few, I'm um, actually been doing the last fiscal year, or since I came in. I'll try to mention quickly, in tourism, Mr. Speaker, we were able to complete the, the restaurant at Kana. I must thank the Minister of Tourism for assisting me in doing that. It started in fiscally 2021, no, 2021. We had a whole lot of contractual issues, got it sorted, we got the monies, and everything nice and crisp by up. We're good to go. So now, yes, is to get the furniture and the, and the um, appliances, so we can open and set up the speaker. I'm very happy for that. Now we are doing a management plan for the Cabris National Park. Um, thank to Minister um, of the Environment for that. We, we will have recommendations going forward as to what is being properly managed and how we are going to do some additional restoration of Cabris because a lot of, of ruins still that, is, that need some restoration so we can open the offerings and make for surely, you know, a better place so we can maximize, you know, the opportunities that can be existing right at Fort Shirley. Um, our JTR to Curry, um, we are doing some repairs now because it was battered by, by burial and some systems before. And um, thanks to the tourism again and my friend, um, um, Forestry, the Minister of Forestry, providing with materials to do that. And of course, the guy from Pace, Cobra and his team, is doing it basically free of charge. I'll uh, just provide some stipend to them. But I'm so grateful for the assistance doing that. And um, as you know, we have the poker run on the 18th. Wow. So we need to get the jetty going for that. And um, we're doing well in, in, in meeting that target, Mr. Speaker. Um, in health, Mr. Speaker, we were able to complete our, our new health center. I was waiting on wood from the Ministry of Health as to when we'll open. Um, I'm honest that they're waiting some, for some furniture and appliances and equipment to do that. And our constituents are eager to have it open, so I hope that we can get that support um, pretty soon. In Five more minutes. Five more minutes. I'm good in time. Thank you. I'm good, yeah. For, on, on agriculture, we were able to maintain all our feeder routes um, during that period. 
We provided support to most of the farmers with greenhouse plastics, white potato seedlings, and um, we were able to construct a feeder road in Clifton costing over $600 to the speaker. I want to thank the PM and the NO office you know, for that investment right there. In education, we've adopted the school feeding program both in Savant Bay and Clifton Primary School. And of course, we continue to provide the students with um, the school books and uniforms, like all other constituency um, is doing. In the blue economy, we have introduced a CMOS farming group into Curry, where we're exploiting that mariculture concept, and the guys are doing well, and um, so we're growing the CMOS in, 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 on, into Curry Bay, and we're looking for great success from that particular um, investment. For the digital economy, we have established and opened two innovation hubs, one in Capuchin, one in Clifton. They are not just open, but we are doing trainings right there, employing young persons in IT skills, and even young adults as well, um, to take advantage of the IT technologies that we're offering um, in Clifton and Capuchin. In sports, um, one very close to my heart, Mr. Speaker, we're, open to, we're able to, to launch the first football club in the cottage constituency ever. First ever. We, we don't have playing fields for football, but we have some guys that were trained by Chris and Andy, and they use Postmouth for now. And they were in the first division league, league of the FAD still, and they did well, and I will commend them for that. So we are doing positive things, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Lamb of Playing Field, we, are, we will continue to do our rare books at the, at the field, and we have persons volunteering to have it manicured and prepared as we look to launch a, a few sporting activities um, this summer. In housing, I want to just pay thanks to the PM for supporting me directly um, in doing some renovation works, well needed renovation works in Tukari, Clifton, Cottage, and Capuchin at a value of over $400,000. And the persons that were benefited, they're very grateful and happy, and they send the thanks to the PM for that direct intervention. Um, but going forward, Mr. Speaker, we have a lot of work to do in Cottage. We have some housing needs. We have to do some drainage works at that time. In Lago, in particular, we have some food pass and drainage works. But importantly, we have the Cotton Hill water system that we need to get going because Cotton Hill is expanding. And we persons higher end don't have um, Doasco. So I'm working with Doasco. They already provided me with an invoice for that. They're working with me. And the PM has committed the funding for that. So this is clearly for sure. We'll extend our system for the persons up in, up in Cotton Hill. And the list can go on. We have a lot to do, but I won't take the entire money listing them. But I just want to thank the persons, my constituents, for their patience, for their love, and most importantly, their prayers um, for keeping me with them um, for that season. Very loving and kind people. They look out for me. I look out for them. I want to thank my association, um, my Labour Party Association in constituency. They are my food soldiers. They work with me very closely. Um, the chairpersons of the, of the councils in Clifton and in Cottage, and our NEP coordinator, our NEP team, for doing a wonderful job in making sure the constituency is clean and green. So whenever you visit, so Mr. Speaker, with that intervention, I want to, I, I, I would like to once again um, lend my support to the budget. And I'm looking forward to a fruitful fiscal year. Thank you very much.